Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for the Physician Enterprise here at Common Spirit Health. Today is Friday, September 9th, and welcome to the five minute check in. So today we're going to break the rules. We're not going to be five minutes. We're actually going to be closer to 10 minutes. And my entire time, I'm going to spend chatting with Dr. Peter Hotez, who is one of the thought leaders in the country and actually in the world around vaccinations, particularly around COVID. He's actually nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize along with his partner at the Baylor College of Medicine. So let's get to it and meet with Dr. Peter Hotez. So now on to our special guest today. I am really happy, and uh, I know he's a very busy man. We have Dr. Peter Hotez with us. Uh, Peter is a professor and the dean at the School of Tropical Medicine at the Baylor College of Medicine. He's also the co-director of the Texan Children's Hospital Center for Vaccine Development. And Peter has been in front of this the whole time, working on his own vaccine development, um, really advising so many people across the country. Uh, so we're really grateful that you're here today, Peter. So thanks for joining us. Oh, it's great to see you, Tom. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So there's a lot going on with the new bivalent vaccine coming out. So why don't you just tell us, like, what does this bivalent vaccine really mean? Just to clarify for us what that is. Um, and, and then we'll get to some of the very practical questions uh, that are everyone seems to be asking everybody around here about when to take it, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. So the way I break it down is, is like this. Um, first of all, it looks as though the boosters are not holding up quite as well as we'd like. Um, within four or five months after getting boosting, we are seeing not only breakthrough infections, which everyone hears about, but also breakthrough hospitalizations. And and that's the reason for getting boosted. So obviously, if you've not gotten vaccinated, you need to. But even if you've gotten vaccinated, if you've only gotten those two initial vaccine doses, you need to get a boost. There's a big difference in whether or not you're hospitalized if you've gotten boosted. And if you're boosted once and eligible, you want to get your second boost as well. And now as we head into the fall in our third year of the pandemic, we have individuals like myself who is eligible for a third uh, boost. Um, and, and I'm a big supporter of that because I really think that makes a difference in whether or not not only if you're getting very sick, but all, but also hospitalized. The question is, what do you get boosted with? And the thinking mm -hmm. now is that with this new BA5 variant, which is accounting for over 90% of the, right. the, the COVID cases, that will do better if we get a booster with both the original lineage, which is still in this new boost, plus one that's tailor-made for the BA5. And that will uh, give you more durable um, and more um, uh, impactful uh, protection. Um, there's been some disagreement in the scientific community because the thinking is now that BA5 is going down, um, mm -hmm. which it is with a very slow, long tail, do we need that one specific for the BA5? Well, I, I think it's important. One, because BA5, even though it's going down, it's not going down very quickly. But the other reason is we don't know what's coming in the winter. Um, right. We've seen the last two years, terrible variants concern of emerge. And we don't know what's lurking out there because we've done such a bad job vaccinating low and middle income countries. That's where these new variants of concerns arise. And the thinking is by having this a uh, specially tailored booster that gets both the original lineage that came out of central China plus BA5, we're more likely to weather whatever's coming down the pike. Right. In other words, so you're kind of know. anticipating what's next. This kind of helps us think about that a little bit. Yeah. That That's right. And it's hard to predict, but the thinking yeah. is, well, it could be more like the original lineage or, or not. not. It could yeah, be it could more be, like BA5. This, yeah. this gives us two shots on goal to give us cross protection. One of the things that comes up with me and I, as I talk about this with people is, you know, hey, I heard this wasn't tested in, you know, thousands of patients. It was done in a rat or a mouse and just looking at, you know, immune response. I have my uh, my response to that. I'm curious what, what you say when you have these new variant uh, based vaccines. How do you respond to that? And because we need to help our docs and our nurses and APPs. They got to answer these questions because they're going to get targeted with these. Yeah, and I, and I've had a lot of discussions with FDA and and others because I'm I'm in that vaccine space, and it, and it goes like this: these there's been several different um, mRNAs that have been extensively tested in humans, um, right. including different types of mRNAs getting different types of variants, and they've all held up about the same in terms of inducing an immune response 
and in terms of uh, safety as well. Safety. So, so even though we're making tweaks now in the actual sequence of the mRNA, it should not make that much difference. Um, and uh, I, you can, couldn't you say, Peter, this is just like we do with the flu every year, right? So we tweak it. We don't study it on thousands of patients every time we tweak the flu shot. Yeah, I mean, and and not, and I've said that as well in the pushback that I've gotten, which is fair enough. Yeah, but Doc, you know, with flu, we've been doing this for a hundred years. Hundred so years, the, yeah. And yeah. mRNA is relative. Yeah. That's true, but I think we've seen, and and I've come around to the point to say, look, we've we've seen enough mRNA, different types of mRNAs go into people by now, that we're we're not seeing anything un, unexpected. So um, it exactly. should be okay. So I'm getting my my bivalent booster as soon as soon as I'm uh, eligible, and that'll be very soon. Yes, and, and as I will. So that's the other question we all get, and we're trying to give tools to our physicians and AVPs to talk to their patients about, you know, when should I get it? Should I wait till it's like, you know, December when it's really cold? Or I had I had just had an interview this morning with somebody that you know, and they were like, well, I think I'm going to get it on Halloween because that's when everyone gets together and gets all kind of messy. But, you know, any thoughts, you know, this is kind of a subjective work on, you know, when you should actually go and get that next bivalent booster. Well, my, my advice has been get it as soon as you can. And, right. and, the, re and the reason is because now's the time that BA5 is circulating. It's a mm -hmm. bad actor. It's causing a, a lot of significant illness, including breakthrough illness. And it takes a week or two for the immune response to kick into it. It's not like the day you exactly. get it, you're going to get the, the immune response. So get it now. And 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 I think our think thinking is going to change and that what's going to happen is every you know few months, we may need another booster. So even if you're getting your second booster now, or in my case, my, my third booster, it's okay. We're going to get and probably likely need another booster down, down the line anyway. So it's not like you have to hold back at this point. Go ahead and get immunized now. Right, right. The other big question is, hey, should I get it with the flu shot? You know, is that okay? Should I separate these out by time? Um, do you have any strong feelings about that? Or doesn't, you doesn't, get, doesn't, you got to get the flu shot doesn't seem to matter. Um, it, it, you know, you can get one in one arm and another in the other arm. I said mm -hmm. the only thing about flu, which by the way, I just got my flu shot. So that's, that's where I stand. But, um, uh, but uh, others in the scientific community are not as, are not as certain. And they, they worry about the flu shot wearing off and others saying, wait till December or January. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think you can argue it either way. And my feeling is I'm doing a lot of travel this fall, uh, I'm going to yeah. get it now. Um, but, you know, the worst of the flu season, of course, is December, it starts into December, into January, February. And so there's yeah. that issue as well. No, there is some, I typically will go sometime late October, early November. But if you're traveling, I think it's a smart thing to do, particularly if you're going anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, as you, you know, because they've had a very bad flu season. So, well, that's the um, thinking is right now is, that because people have been social distancing so much that that we've not really been exposed to a lot of flu these last few years so that potentially a, a bad season's coming and maybe this will be the one yeah quick comment on this uh white house comment that we're going to have the one shot a year uh for covid or you know what what are your what's your thoughts on that well my thinking is that 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 is a real possibility and i think that that could happen. I, I thought it was a bit premature to come out yeah. and say that at this point. Right now, we've got to get people focused on the current booster. Um, you know, is once a year going to be enough? I mean, we've seen so far that it starts to decline after a few months. And and if it is a annual booster, what's in that annual booster? Because we don't have the service. I mean, the difference between flu and COVID-19 is flu is we've got to, you know decades of experience with it yeah we've got a very sophisticated system of surveillance it's quite a carefully orchestrated dance that goes on with doing the surveillance for predicting what's going to come out next working with the companies to make that next lot of virus we don't really have that in place so um I, and then the other problem is we're having a terrible time convincing the american people to take their boosters in the first place only 30 percent have taken right. their first booster um, uh, less their second booster. We'll see how we do with this booster. So there's a lot of work to do, I think, before we make that statement. So the answer is yes, we may need an annual booster, but I think there's some more water that's got to go under the bridge before we, right. we make that pronouncement. Well, maybe for the last comment, any 
work that you're doing in your vaccine research or anything you'd like to just tell us that you you know think we should know or anything exciting and also i think you is it true you were nominated for the nobel you and your team were nominated for the nobel prize is that accurate I'm, uh, with my science partner Dr. with Mary your partner yes, yes. yeah yeah for we so congratulations for very well deserved but well, well, so. well thank you i mean it, it, and what we've been doing is developing um, vaccines um, in an academic health center with the idea that there's some vaccines that the big pharma companies won't make because they're for de poverty related diseases like schistosomiasis and Chagas disease. And we use that same philosophy to start making coronavirus vaccines about 10 years ago, and then pivoted to make a low cost COVID vaccine for India now, um, which has been scaled up and produced by a vaccine producer there known as Biological E. 80 million doses has gone into arms. Uh, so far. And now in Indonesia, a second version um, is, is being made and we're hoping that'll be released soon for emergency use. And because it's a vegan vaccine, no animal cells or human uh, cells the or, or protein, the um, the Indonesians are making this as a halal vaccine for uh, oh, great. majority countries. Mm -hmm. So, well, I, you so, know, so Peter, this, I, is, you, this is, this is, this is the amazing. beauty of common spirit, you know, I love it. Ha having both academic health centers and and a lot of different variety. Peter, I I've been you know listening to you and following you and 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 you know your work in this space is just so admirable and uh, and thank you for everything you're doing and thanks for partnering with Common Spirit. No, oh, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to be working with Common Spirit. So thank you. So once again, thank you for joining me today at the five minute check in, and I'll see everyone in two weeks. Mm -hmm.